Welcome and thank you for attending the June 1st, 2023 meeting of the Baltimore County Planning Board. It is now called to order. I'm Nancy Hafford, the chair, and I will now start this meeting by introducing and accounting for my fellow board members that are with us here today. When you hear your name, whether it's correctly spelled or incorrectly spelled, um, say aye. Mr. Avery. Ms. Brophy. Aye. Ms. German. Mr. Hafer. Mr. Heckman. Aye. Mr. Heinel. Mr. Hinton. Aye. Mr. Halipka. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Mr. McGinnis. Aye. Mr. Perlow. Aye. Ms. Panero. Mr. Warren. Aye. Ms. Wolfson. Aye. Thank you all. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Bensley, is there any changes to the uh, tentative agenda? No changes, Madam Chair. Thank you. In the May 25th, 2023 email, you received draft minutes from the May 18th meeting. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the draft minutes? If so, no corrections? If, thank you. Can I have all in favor? Aye. Thank you. First on today's agenda is a brief introduction of the Department of Planning's partners. Please welcome Ms. Gagne, Chief of the Community Planning Division to introduce her staff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good evening, planning board members. So we are here. <laughs> So thank you for the opportunity to introduce the team um, because of CZMP coming up. We are divided by district and we have all seven district planning um, area planners here today to introduce ourselves. I'm just going to let them go ahead and introduce each of them. And we can start with district one, Sophie Kotzka. And because we don't have a District 5 planner, I'm going to be representing District 5 this evening. What about Dave over there? <laughs> David is District 6. <laughs> David is District 6. <laughs> David Burke is all Well, thank you for the opportunity. This is it. And can we, in exchange, also know who the district, uh, who the planning boards are for each district? I'm one district one. I would furlough um, county executive appointment. Emily Brophy, county executive appointment. Mark Heckman, district two. Wayne McGinnis, district three. Kathy Wolfson, district four. Nancy Hafford, county executive appointment. Scott Alupa, executive appointment. Greg Johnson, executive appointment. Chrissy Penton, executive appointment. And thank you to the wonderful planning staff here that over there for all the work that you've done on the master plan and everything else. But I want to thank my board members for your service to this commission. You've you've been tremendous. And the work I've seen in the comments you've put in for the master plan. Um, I really appreciate all the time that you've spent on it. And thank you, Gagne. So do any of you have any questions for Ms. Gagne or staff at this time? 
Okay, next on our agenda is deliberation on the master plan 2030. This item is first introduced, was first introduced to the board on May 4th, 2023 at a virtual meeting hearing and was conduct and a virtual meeting hearing was conducted on May 18th, 2023. Tonight, we have an opportunity to discuss the plan and a vote is scheduled for our next meeting on June 15th. I would now like to turn the Department of Planning to the, for additional comments and information to the board on this issue. Mr. Lafferty, the floor is now yours. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, let me echo uh, the, uh, the Chair's comments and I want to thank all of you for uh, the diligence that you've put into the work as a volunteer, uh, one of the most important groups, I think, in the county. Uh, and also thank those of you who uh, were able to submit some comments and questions so that we could better prepare for today. Uh, today is, a, is, as the Chair said, a work session uh, to review and discuss the draft master plan that you uh, received on May 18th. Um, there will be no votes tonight, but what we do ask you to do is if it's possible to submit any written motions that you intend to submit for the um, May, excuse me, June 15th meeting, if you're able to submit any of those in advance, that helps us better prepare and I hope to be as efficient as possible as we work through this, this uh, uh, story map and document. Um, as you know, we're here not just to talk about a couple of issues, but as we've tried to indicate, all the, the entire plan really is for discussion. The sequestered items that are on the chart that was one in front of you, but also sent to you, are items that we received in advance uh, that certainly we're going to walk through as well. Um, as you have heard previously in the presentation, uh, this draft document is the result of hundreds of inputs, uh, not only during virtual meetings that started more than two years ago, but even leading up to uh, that point, staff had gone through uh, numerous previous community plans, had looked at items that have been relevant and important uh, in previous planning efforts, and also then tried to capture from each of the uh, public meetings sort of those items that sort of fit into a plan as opposed to perhaps being more localized issues that are going to be hopefully dealt with in small area plans going forward. Um, so the, the intent or hope tonight is to walk through this chart with the various items um, and then uh, both Amy Mante and, and Jen Meacham, who really took the lead in, in bringing this document and the story map to you today, uh, will, along with me, answer whatever question and provide you. I love it up there. Okay. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. Um, very weird. Um, the, the plan structure, as has been explained before, really came from uh, professional guidance from the American Planning Association and it's the same place this document. Uh, using other professional planning concepts, including the idea of retrofitting.
the document as we plan to have, which can be implemented for a decade. Um, last thing I'll remind you of is that this is not a zoning document. Comprehensive zoning comes after the master plan. And so that's the time when individual parcels and properties will be examined as to whether or not the zoning is correct to help implement the master plan, as well as to implement other goals that the executive and you may set. Um, so the draft plan is really in your hands. Um, it is now for the planning board and, and for all of you as, as residents of the county and to lend your expertise and insights as to how this can best guide where we're going over the next decade. Uh, and I, again, want to thank you for the input you provided. And I also want to give kudos to the two people who use the chart to uh, respond to the sequester request, which helps us make it easier. Thank you, Ms. Brophy and Mr. Heckman. Appreciate that. Um, now, in all seriousness, all of you really, I know, are very attentive to the significance of this, uh, this time. Uh, we look forward to the conversation today and in providing answers or clarity if we can. Uh, and then I'm looking forward to the vote in two weeks. So thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm going to do a little test real quick. I'm sure. Um, is having this on what was causing the, because I turned it off when you were talking. Okay. Okay. Just that we're having some technical issues this afternoon before. Um, so if it starts doing that again, I'm going to turn this back off. Um, so, um, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board, um, I guess our thought for the structure of this meeting was to start with, you know, sort of things that you had sent ahead of time, so we had some place to start as far as the comments. Um, we'll go through the comments, um, which, again, you have in front of you, um, just to kind of put forth. I know some of the comments are put, put, you know, were given to us by Planning Board members who aren't here, um, but just to kind of start a discussion, and then any questions or, you know, comments you have along the way. Um, it was just sort of a format to give us um, some guidance for, for discussion this afternoon. So um, if there are no other issues with that, I'll go ahead and get started going through the chart. Okay. So the first um, section we were going to go through as far as comments go is the overview. Um, and the first um, comment we have listed was from Planning Board member Katie Panero. Um, there was um, a, re a, quest, a request or a comment from her to add some language to the overview, uh, clarifying the purpose of the core retrofit areas and confirming development else will, elsewhere will still be permitted. So uh, she proposed uh, adding a paragraph, um, starting uh, with several mandates to add section 32.4.102A of the Baltimore County Code indicates that development shall conform to the master plan and any adopted community plans to avoid confusing, confusion about the role and implementation of the master plan purpose of the master plan is to encourage and even incentivize growth and development within those areas being most suitable for retrofitting the core retrofit areas. However, it should be made clear that growth and development may occur anywhere within the ERDL and in certain areas outside the ERDL where zoning would permit it. Incentivizing growth in certain areas does not mean growth outside those areas is inconsistent with the master plan 2030. And her basis for that was any reference to limitations on the development Within the rural should be removed, redevelopment in the selected areas should be encouraged through prioritization and incentives, and clear language should be added and repeated throughout the plan that growth and development may occur anywhere within the ERDL and in certain areas outside the ERDL where zoning would permit it. Uh, in relation to that comment from her, um, this, there are a few recommendations in here from staff. We had a similar recommendation um, if the planning board was, you know, willing to entertain it. Let's see if I can find it. It is um, the first one in the growth framework methodology, GF4. We suggested adding something similar, um, that development activity in the core retrofit areas, like all development, will require the requisite infrastructure to support this new. Page two and three. While these core retrofit areas must, must be the primary focus for development and investment over the next decade, development activity is permitted outside these areas and will likely continue based on the market and other opportunities. So I just wanted to draw the connection between those two that we had recommended a similar um, edit as well. So are there any questions or comments about, I know she's not here, um, about her um, 
recommendation there that you have for us? Mm -hmm. um, I read the proposed edit is in the fourth column what we would recommend changing um, we're not editing the we're not editing the document until there would be a vote yeah 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 which, which would occur on the 15th if this is actually reduced to a motion then to, to add this to the document Comments? Questions? It's not really a question, it's a comment. Oh gosh, are we going to do this? I've got, I'll use my arm voice. Um, I thought the format was I have a question, I guess. I'll look at that.
does now if if a community plan is updated or the pedestrian and bicycle plan gets updated then it it is still part of master plan it's just a newer version of what was adopted in 2010 or 2020 whatever it is in place because <coughs> that's that's part of the adoption by the county council is it becomes an amendment to the master plan so, so what I did Question to the minister. In the past, uh, this document, this document, has been reviewed by legal department for legal sufficiency before it goes to the county council or after the county council. And then it goes to what the uh, pastor said. So the document needs uh, instructions. That is not the case. That we have to review how this document uh, is working with him. To my knowledge, it's not 
reviewed by the Office of Law prior to being submitted to the County Council, or has not been historically, I'll put it that way. <clears throat> you have a soft voice when referring to something in this. Can you tell us what page we're on so we can zero in on that? In my One of my former occupations as a teacher, <clears throat> I had to make sure everybody in the back of the room could hear what I was saying. It means you have to elevate your voice a little bit. One common complaint I have with the speaker here, uh, now the young fellows can uh, hear that very well, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you have to speak in a public voice a little louder. What you say? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions right now before Ms. Mante moves? So the county regulations that are posted online, don't they include hyperlinks? Many, many of them do, yes. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Sure. All right, so the next um, item still on page one is um, <coughs> from um, planning board member Emily Brophy. The story map website is quite cumbersome to navigate, and I've had a lot of trouble with issues in accessing it. I believe this was brought up by the public during a public hearing session as well. I understand the need for a living, breathing document to easily update, but having an easier, easier to view format would be helpful. I encourage more public input if the master plan document was easier to access and navigate. Okay, that's a bit of what we just discussed, but is there something else that you wanted to add or address? So I think the reason I really brought that up was, I mean, clearly I can navigate a website, but even I have technical issues when getting to a loading, especially through different um, maps as you scroll down and different colors start appearing and start disappearing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to realize that while we did get public input by email online and virtually, there's still a lot of people that don't have access to these websites. And obviously the county executive is working on that to provide and you know I applaud that, but it does mean you're going to lose a lot of these hard to reach demographics by moving to a story map. Um, so now page two, uh, we're moving to the vision framework. Um, so I've tried to reference as I can, so hopefully you can follow along. Um, the livable built environment, goal one, action one, create a redevelopment framework that reinforces the existing urban rural demarcation line and focuses on redevelopment strategies through community planning policies. Um, the staff um, wanted to put on the table an option to add um, and housing after redevelopment in this action um, based on uh, public comment at the hearing. I don't know if there are any comments or um, thoughts about that one from the board. I think this is in part reflect, well, two, you have a couple of questions embedded in there, I think, Mr. Lee. One is that, to my knowledge, there's not been an official policy saying every decade, every 20 years, 15 years, whatever, that the, the boundary of the Earl will be revisited or reviewed for its appropriateness. Um, so I don't know that there's any statement 
either in the code or the policy to that effect. And this does reflect, I know the county executive's position that the Earl should remain in place. Uh, and as we know from public testimony, the majority of the testimony we heard about the Earl was to retain it the way it was. Um, and although I know that in talking with Mr. Warren other times, I know there's some sentiment for moving it, uh, there really is a commitment to retaining it now because of the commitment also to preservation of the lands outside of the ordinance. I guess I just feel that as one of these other things, that we have this process in place for ever again. I mean, I don't know. Thing is, what you're saying is reflecting what Mr. Luke has said that as we propose other changes, uh, such, such as the comprehensive zoning map process, that if the board feels that the Earl should be reviewed on a periodic basis, whatever that would be, um, that could be a recommendation um, as part of the land use processes that uh, are described here. If you want to add one, remove one, I mean, that's again the, the purview of the board before the document goes to the county council. So that could be a motion, that could be an amendment introduced at the next meeting if, if that's the sentiment of the board. That, 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 that would be In 2008 and 2012, the Ertl was moved by 160 acres in um, Councilmatic District 1 and uh, replaced Resource Conservation 2 and 6. So there are mechanisms. It's called the CZMP. And there, so there are mechanisms to move the Ertl. So can we make it clear? It is clear. It's clear in the regulations that that's how it works. Any other questions? Comments? If not, Ms. Mante. Okay. We're still on page two under the new framework. Um, livable built environment goal one. Action one is an additional comment from um, planning board member Emily Brophy. 
hard or say okay. so she's just saying here that there should be a change to this action because redevelopment of property can be as costly as building new as such the county should have procedures grant plans and other resources in place to entice property owners to redevelop or improve properties explain the season two process would increase redevelopment and community goals so do you have any other um comments or you know explanation on that one we really didn't you know we didn't really mention any addition or change but that was just really your, your thoughts on it so any comments or questions on that one or just talked about it from the staff um suggestion and the same step i guess i'd like to maybe hear why you feel that it should be a 10 year step and a four year Personally, think it, it, it works in Baltimore County. I find that other counties that I'm active in, involved in, going to do it every eight years or ten years. Um, it's taken a long time to get the ability to redevelop. I think maybe in the past it was more law after a few laws that were repealed in the county, but um, it takes a very long time to be able to move the project forward when you're already. Approval process is you know, this type of thing. If you have to wait to change zoning, then go through the planning process, you could have waited a lifetime. Okay. So, what my, my brief comment is one, as all of you know, that we've been through some zoning changes, uh, it's takes an enormous amount of time. And uh, what we have found. Historically, in the department, is that it really does delay the ability of local communities to address the issues that are ever present. Um, secondly, is we're pretty unique, and that's not to say the county shouldn't be unique. Um, other, nobody else follows that process, and if we're going to suggest that zoning should follow the master plan, then. Instead, what we're finding is you're flipping the switch and you're having the master plan following the zoning. Um, so the question then as a policy is, which should be directing the growth and development of the county? Is it the zoning or is it a bigger, more holistic picture of what the county should become or the growth that it is, should become really? Um, and I know, you know philosophically, there, there's a very opinion I, I certainly respect what you're saying, Carlo, and I think that there's another comment that was suggested about reviewing and revising our out of cycle or cycle zoning. And maybe that's a mechanism that should be strengthened instead of the CZMP. Um, so I, I think that's a few of the reasoning, few of our reasons for coming forward and rec making this recommendation to follow really the, the follow the CZMP. Have the CCMP follow the master plan as opposed to finding ourselves in that. It's actually been a 10 year cycle where we have the CCMP. Thank you, Sean. I support his comments, and I think that um, having the public to go through this every couple of years is a, a lot of strain on their, um, their actives, uh, activists, activism. And I think that uh, the public in general support a longer space between thank you any other comments mr warren yeah i my challenge that i have
Well, in all due respect, Mr. Warren, I guess I would say that the four-year cycle has not diminished segregation, has not made housing more affordable, has really not gotten us to the point that you believe, and I think all of us believe we should be as far as having more attainable housing in the county. Four-year cycle has not advanced that. So I'm not sure that lengthening the cycle makes it any worse in that regard. So I guess that's where I would challenge you at least. Can I answer that? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. it would be Very quick. Since no one's got microphones on. Yeah, I'm not sure it's all being recorded. That's part of our challenge. The, 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 the challenge we have with length of the cycle is only a month now. So now you're going to go from a four-year cycle to a nine house to a ten-year cycle. The, the challenge that we, we live in a dynamic world and chat world's changing so quickly that I think we should press some of these things and stay in the dynamic world. And we do that in our, in our have, have we looked at other what other you know, schools, whether it's county schools that are what's the kind of thing? My problem is this we want to say we want to get it and we do it. I'm okay with that. But just like putting the ten years in there to have four years I'm sorry, I've got a pension in the last two years. CZMP. Um, <laughs> there were seven projects, affordable housing, that I thought should be approved. Um, councilman turned them down. They didn't want them in their district. And we've got a consent decree with the government, the federal government. And I'm happier every four years to have another shot to bring up those projects and bring them online that much sooner. And 10 years is way too long. I mean, I'm thinking St. Mark's in high school. Yeah. I personally was distraught um, I put my religion on some Jewish condominium owners down the street a mile that they said they didn't want this in that project. And if you look at four Weinberg houses in Pikesville, all around them, I was furious. And I told council man in that district and other council members as well that they would not see my support in the next election unless they got the house approval. Making it 10 years means it was 15 years by the time we go through this next unacceptable for our county, which is now in a dark and quiet place. I, I said this in, in, in out that an out of cycle um, zoning process would be good, not for a ten year and we have to keep funding it just to fill up the cycle. You know, or we're just sitting and just be playing whack a mole year after year month after month and putting it in that. Environmental center 
We've generally looked at that before, um, and to our knowledge within the country, um, everyone has a 10 or eight year process. All right, so um, we're still on page two. Um, this is actually just a little bit of a repeat, but I'll read it anyway, uh, because the last one kind of jumped to this. Um, for livable built environment, goal one, action eight, um, regarding extending the frequency of the comprehensive zoning map process from four years to 10 years. Um, Councilwoman um, Brophy just added this comment that the redevelopment of a property can be as costly as building new. As such, the county should have procedures, grants, loans, other resources in place to entice property owners to redevelop or improve properties. Extending the CZMP process would impede redevelopment and hinder this goal. So I know we've already discussed this, but if you have anything else you want to add at this point. All right. All right. And we would agree that we'd like to develop actually a robust redevelopment package, if you will, with loans and grants and tax abatement, whatever it's going to take, and I think that is the next step. All right, the last one um, that was submitted ahead of time regarding the livable built environment um, was a staff uh, recommendation to add a new goal. Um, so goal two, action, or add, action, add a new action to goal two. Um, create and implement a range of incentives to support and increase attainable housing inside the Ertl. Um, and this was based on public comment at the hearing. So, there are any comments or questions about that? All right, so um, moving on to the growth framework. Uh, the next one was something that was suggested by staff based on public comment at the hearing for the methodology um, growth framework part four. Um, 
development activity in the core retrofit areas, like all development, will require the requisite infrastructure to support this new approach. While these core retrofit areas must be the primary focus for development and investment over the next decade, development activity is permitted outside these areas and will likely continue based on the market and other opportunities. So the addition of is permitted and will likely continue was um, staff suggestion for that one. Because we can't predict where it's going to take place, I think was the, the but certainly that term likely to be stricken. That's it. And this is this is a statement, a shorter statement than what Ms. Pinero, I think, and maybe one of the first statements made. It's, it's the same concept at least. It's not, we do acknowledge, and we don't believe really that the document limited or restricted it, but if this reinforces that fact, then that's why we would recommend something like this. Okay. All right. Page three, place types in the growth framework five. This came from planning board member Katie Pinero uh, to add language at the beginning of Growth Framework 5, clarifying the purpose of the core retrofit areas and confirming the development elsewhere will still be permitted. So um, this is a pretty lengthy mm -hmm. one that I'll read. Uh, existing, at this time it says, Master Plan 2030 Place Types Map provides general recommendations for land use based upon vision framework goals and actions as well as the retrofit analysis described above. Uh, Ms. Pinero recommends the following be added. In particular, the map identifies areas deemed most suitable for retrofitting and growth and development within these areas should be encouraged and even incentivized. However, development may occur anywhere within the URL and in certain areas outside the URL where zoning would permit it. Incentivizing growth in certain areas does not mean growth outside those areas is inconsistent with the Master Plan 2030. The map is conceptual and intended to reflect future land use patterns that would support the land use objectives of Master Plan 2030. The map does not identify land use of individual properties or parcels. The place types map will provide general direction for county land use decisions and may be amended as needed through the community plans or small area plans. Um, and her basis for uh, making that request was the draft plan seeks to reduce the land available for growth and development within the Ertl and instead calls for retrofitting or redevelopment only in certain selected areas. Any reference to limitations on new development within the Ertl should be removed. Redevelopment in the selected areas should be encouraged through prioritization and or incentives, and clear language should be added and repeated throughout the plan that growth and development may occur anywhere within the URTL and in certain areas outside the URTL where zoning would permit it. Okay. All right, so for Place types in growth, growth framework part five, revise the definitions in the section established neighborhood and connected neighborhood to reflect existing conditions. So there are some additions here under established neighborhood. Uh, the addition would be areas within the Ertl not within connected neighborhoods and those consist of a mix of established commercial, industrial, and residential areas. Although much of this area is already developed, there is still opportunity for new and infill development and redevelopment. Flipping to page four. Uh, she's requests that we strike the section on suburban neighborhoods generally consisting of moderate density, predominantly detached single family homes built post World War II that will remain as such for the foreseeable future and adding the neighborhoods are served with public water and sewer service. To the primary land use for this piece, uh, she suggested adding commercial and industrial. The secondary land use, she suggested striking limited office and commercial. Then for place type for connected neighborhoods, areas connecting established neighborhoods and nodes, she suggested that we add that, a con that consist of a mix of commercial, industrial, and residential areas where higher density, new or infill development, or including a variety of housing types such as detached single family, townhomes and apartments, 
These places contain the population needed to support the node which they surround. Primary land use, adding commercial and industrial. Any questions about that one? Comments? far over my skis, but we're at a juncture where, and part of it's sort of post-pandemic, but a lot of it is always starting to show decline. Uh, I've asked, for instance, that we look at the identified nodes uh, and whether or not the zoning in place in those nodes could support mixed use. If you have a BL or BR or BM zone, uh, you cannot build residential but you can add an overlay with CT or CCC that would allow you to build apartments. So I think we need to take a hard look before CZMP at whether or not there are opportunities where you could add the overlay and therefore open the opportunity for residential in conjunction with the business uses that are permitted in those particular zones. Um, that's part of what's driving our thinking on these core retrofit areas is can we create like the mobility node? Well, that's really sounds like a TOD and sort of that concept is how do you mix the uses to better serve or create a community? And, you know, the, your example with the Kimco applications, you know, um, yeah, I think that kind of mixed use opportunity is what we, what we have to pursue because many of these shopping centers, I think about uh, Logan Village Shopping Center in Dundalk, or some of the uh, less than even some of these more than half empty shopping centers on Liberty Road. You know, if the commercial market is not going to return, we need to find some other valuable use to the community. Having a mix of uses, I think, is something we need to be able to really drill down into. So we're having those conversations all the time frankly, right now. And, and part of that came out of the affordable housing work group and recommendations they have about looking at opening up other zones for housing opportunities. Well, the comprehensive zoning is a mapping process. So if the text of the code doesn't you have to go through the whole county council process to change the text of the code. I mean, just like you'll have to go through the CZMP through the council, but, and we probably got a little late start on doing that because the text of the code won't, can't be done before CZMP starts. Uh, but that's not to say that we can't later examine the text of the code in order to open up more opportunities. But again, through CZMP, there may be an opportunity to use the existing overlays, the existing zones to open up more opportunities.
Well, I, I can't I can't speak to how Ms. Pinheiro got to these recommendations and why she thinks certain things should be included. Um, and I think that again goes to a comprehensive zoning issue. Uh, we have not heard our economic development people uh, comment that there's an absence of industrial. In fact, we've heard more developers suggest to us that the industrial properties may need to be opened up for residential. So, but I mean, that's generic, you know, and I'm sure it depends on where it is. Certainly not at TPA, Trade Point Atlantic, but there may be some older industrial that actually needs to be rethought. Okay. All right, I'm on page four at the very bottom. It's another um, recommendation from Planning Board member Katie Panero. Uh, place types, or sorry, place types in the growth framework five. Revise the images for the place types and the PDF overview of the place types to be consistent with the above revised definitions or delete them. So, of course, if we made any changes to the place types, we would then update the graphics that go along with them. So, are there any other questions? Questions about that? Okay, I'm on page five. Uh, growth framework, part five, place types. Revise the image in growth framework five that indicates the Lafarge quarry to include the entire 415 acres. Um, and this came from planning board member Katie Panera. Jim's pulling that up on the map if you needed to see it. Are there any questions about this one? I mean, she's not here to answer, and we don't have a basis for change, but that was in the list that she submitted. Mm -hmm. I think it says, yes, it does not include the, revise it to include the entire 415 acres. Part of it is showing that not reflected necessarily here, Jackman as special use, uh, other is showing as I think connected neighborhood because of the surrounding area. Yeah, Okay, still on page five, uh, place types, growth framework five. This was a staff um, recommendation based on public comment at the hearing um, to include this language into the place types regarding UMBC into the special use. In the southeastern part of the county, University of Maryland, Baltimore County has a substantial presence. This highly rated public university is recognized for IT research, innovation, and commitment to diversity and equity. Located on 530 acres west of the Beltway and next to both Catonsville and Arbutus, UMBC has expanded its community outreach and has established a, fact, a faci facility with the popular, popular Okamoka Cafe in Arbutus. UMBC is also home to BW Tech at UMBC Research and Technology Park. The university also recently took ownership of the 200-acre Spring Grove property situated north of the current campus. No specific plans have been presented for this site. It also contains state-operated psychiatric services and county-owned homeless person shelter and recreational facilities. That this would be inserted into the special use, it would be given the special use designation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, based on a public comment at the yeah, hearing. There's a public comment. Uh, Steve Whalen made the comment about it, which. Um, 
but part of it would come down to the definition of special use, which would need to be broadened from what it currently is reflected in the plan, um, which really had as, as much of an industrial element. This would obviously need to maybe reflect more of the technology research. Uh, and then, quite frankly, I would think that he would try to utilize that to, to help promote his own project, as well as other projects in the area. And I know that UMBC is engaged now in, in a new master planning process with the new president of the, of the university. Uh, don't we, I, I'm not aware of what they may be looking to do on the Spring Grove property site, but it, you know, as an institution, they, they have a unique opportunity to, to really drive a lot of change in that whole area. And the fact that they've gotten much more engaged in Arbutus, for instance, I think shows that they're expanding their, not just the footprint, but their engagement that really is going to, could make a difference in that whole area. about a tram. <laughs> not me, it's not my time. Sure, so still on page five, um, this is a recommendation that came to us from Mark Heckman, place types both framework five uh, for the established neighborhoods Suburban neighborhoods could generally consisting of moderate density, predominantly detached single family homes. Uh, he requested that we modify after single family homes, add and small scale commercial strike that will remain as such for the foreseeable future. Uh, the basis for change was that it reflects actual conditions in most neighborhoods and removes a declarative statement about the future of these neighborhoods. Comments? Still on page five at the bottom, this came from planning board member Katie Pinero. Land use processes, growth framework six, six. Revise the language in growth framework six to eliminate the suggestion to increase the time interval for the comprehensive zoning map process to 10 years. Um, the addition is a little bit lengthy here, so I will read through it. Probably don't. Do you read through it? So we already went through it? We've already discussed that. Okay. So I will not read through but, it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it fits, obviously it fits in the growth framework portion as well. Right, okay. All right, now, that was like a couple pages. Now we're on page eight. So we've moved to page eight. Um, this is an issue that came from. Before, excuse me, if I may. I think one of, the diff, one of the items though that is a little different um, is on page seven where she talks about striking the language about the sequencing. Um, it seems to be some line in the of the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she strikes the, the section that we talk about um, the reference to the uh, recommendation in the efficiency study and um, the quote from. Uh, director of PAI, Pete Gutwald, and realigning the major land use processes, reordering the sequence of decision making for hierarchical order. Which is more than, it's more indifferent than simply striking CZMP as a 10 year or uh, 40 year cycle issue. Mm -hmm. We proposed, yes. Right. And, and one of the challenges, and actually there was public testimony about this uh, uh, last time, is that by the time we really get the decennial census information and it's useful, it's really like two or three years later. It's not 2020. We really are getting it like in 2022 or 2023. 
So should you start your work without knowing the real demographic make makeup of the, of the county? And so even bumping that back a couple of years after the decennial um, census information and then sequencing your capital programming, your, all the other uh, water and sewer amendments and those sort of things. I'll turn to our data person. <laughs> Didn't they just re release an ACS data, or was that more the decennial that they finally got out? In the red, um, page six. Amendments to the master plan come through the planning board, but ultimately have to be approved by the council. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I believe we're on page eight at this point. Um, land use processes, growth framework six. This came from planning board member Emily Brophy. Changes to zoning should align with the comprehensive zoning process, thus freeing up staff time. Um, master plan recommends adjusting the CZMP to a 10-year cycle. Um, again, I think we've probably already touched on this, but um, I understand the need for adjusting the CZMP process to align with the master plan timeline for consistency and efficiency, but the current cycle zoning change process is cumbersome. Property conditions can change more frequently than every 10 years, and property owners need to be able to adjust accordingly. I suggest reviewing the cycle zoning change process and frequency if this is adopted. Comments. Okay. Um, the next one, still on page eight, land use processes, growth framework six. Uh, this came from Howard Perlo and Todd Warren. Uh, it's really just a statement. The plan calls for the frequency of the CCMP to be every 10 years and for further restrictions on the PUD process. This removes two very valuable development tools, tools that are also imperative for redevelopment. Any other comments or questions about that? Right. <laughs> and, right. And, and as to I think that, it's still in here somewhere. So as to the PUD process, there's no recommendation to do away with the PUD process. The question of reviewing it, uh, because there have been a number of questions and concerns, and the fact that the council now is considering revocation of a PUD to me suggests that maybe we need to look at the processes that are used for developing parts. So
I'm not really speaking to the resolution to of this that because of issues like that that does I think raise questions about the value of reviewing the process, not necessarily to change the process. This is really about reviewing it to see if it system that we have in place is still appropriate. I mean, quite, quite honestly, if there's one project that is basically to create one commercial property, one commercial business on a piece of property. Is that what a PUD was intended to do? I think that's that becomes the question. It's a policy question. Of what are you trying to achieve with a PUD? Yes, you can get rid of the underlying zoning. And the question that came up with Lafarge and Attorneys have weighed in is that can you take a residential piece of property and build commercial on it? Well, the language of the HUD code suggests you can, the regulations, but there's another analysis that says no, you can't. So let's take a hard look at how it works. Can we achieve something creative with a different process? And that's the intent, I believe, when it was created is to be innovative and not be confined by a particular zoning classification. So I think that's really what. We're trying to convey here that we it's appropriate to review it. Slums of slums in Southeast Washington turn it into a, a big powerhouse. So are they going to come to Baltimore County if they feel like that would be too much time to want to give them time to count and help it out? Will they, will they invest their money for all the preliminary work if they have the opportunity to help them try to do it? Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So we're still on page eight, so this extends the next page or two. This is a pretty long one, but it does relate to the PUD process. Development processes in growth framework seven to revise the language. Um, remove the language recommending changes to the PUD process. Um, so I'll read through what she's added and changed here. Many of the development manuals used today were created decades ago and need to be updated in order to reflect modern day development practices. The definition and application process for a TOD needs to be more clearly specified. She suggests striking um, the planned unit development process um, needs to be evaluated for transparency, clear articulation of eligibility requirements, community benefits, and ensuring higher quality development. Um, next down from that, planned unit development process is, she, provides, she suggests striking a mixed use, so a planned use a PUD is a development that may strike, combine, proposed residential, recreational, industrial, and or commercial elements. The approval process for a PUD is similar to that of other land development projects, except that the county council must determine the PUD will achieve substantially higher quality development than a conventional development. She proposed adding, this determination is made after having received input from county agencies and from the community following a community meeting and public hearing before the council. Um, then she proposes striking um, the section from the purpose of a PUD um, down to the end. PUDs are only permitted within the urban rural demarcation line, adding with the ability for council to approve uses and densities not otherwise permitted by the underlying zoning. The PUD process has proven a valuable to, to, tool to allow for development and redevelopment in this mature jurisdiction. She then proposes to strike everything below that. Um, all the way down to producing. Okay. Now we're on page 11. Um, these are, let's see, okay. So um, this is from uh, planning board member Halupka. Um, this was, it seems, questions and comments, not necessarily like an, an action to change uh, wording. The claim is the part, Claim is that the department has identified the most retrofit worthy locations throughout Baltimore County using a neutral data driven process based on a number of geographic, social, and economic determinants. 
How and why were these 27 metrics identified? What criteria was used to assign the weights? Several criteria overlap on identifying poor places, vulnerable census tract, commercial revitalization district, sustainable community. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll let Jennifer answer the details of that, but you know, generally we were looking at community input, we were looking at the APA uh, references that we have for sustaining places and retrofitting models, um, and you know, just sort of our general staff experience and expertise and what we've seen out in the community.
Well, but, but we also had, we also had emails and other information other than people just being on the on the video. Yeah. No, that's not accurate. All right. Yep, sure. So the next one um, is again from Scott, and I think builds on what he had asked previously. Um, all the metrics were combined on this map to give each area inside the Erdl retrofit score. What is an area? Is it a parcel, a block, a block group, a track? Is there a database that shows the scores for each of the areas? Is there a map? What is the distribution of the retrofit scores? What criteria threshold was used to identify retrofit? Retrofit worthy locations, how is that threshold set?
And nobody has that intention of surrender at all. I can guarantee you nobody has that intention at all. So what we'll do, if you don't mind, we can look at it, but have a conversation about that. We'll move along and then we'll have a discussion about that. All right. So we will move past uh, Mr. Hillopas' uh, questions. He had some additional questions about 15-minute city concepts, the whole retrofit area. Um, just for folks who don't have a copy of this, I thought I would just kind of touch on it. Um, and um, some questions about the small area plans and um, that kind of thing. All right, so I will move um, to the next piece, page 12, um, just past the, the last, sorry, go ahead.
they say to me, they ask the question, what's going to happen in 50 or 100 years? Okay. It's also going to ask 10 years. Green Spring Valley, I think most of us have sat on this board for the last 10 or 15 years. And so, We don't have a deadline. Um, uh, I believe, uh, I know there is desire to have it completed, or at least to the council, <clears throat> before CZMP begins in September. Um, but we don't have a set time frame. MP is in September. So I think what I'm hearing from the planning board, you feel you need a little time to digest this? I make a suggestion. Yes, sir. And Steve, this is to you and your team, and particularly we're working this all the time. Um, but there is a lot that I admit, you know, might be involved in real estate, but that I don't understand some of the terms, some of the things that happen. I personally would love to see us have a few work sessions that I don't know whether that means one, two, or three, to really be able to ask questions of you. You know, Scott, you do have a lot of knowledge, and other people do, but. You know, there's just a 
a long document, a very important document for the next 10 years. I think in some of our discussions that we were having in the back and forth, you know, our vote here really means something. Sometimes we know we're political cover for the council or for the county executive, and that this is something that is going to affect our county in the next 10 years. And I think we've scheduled a couple of extra meetings. I think we try and schedule us all for a truly a long afternoon from one to five or something like that because we want to really try to keep it long. But the best that I can, you know, I will try to not let fail. I know it's going to be a long term operate this last week because it was very important this week. But Well, I think you think I think it would probably be good to have the meeting on the fifteenth yeah. and come up with some plans on moving forward. Well, I, I guess, Madam Chair, I would, if in fact the the board is looking for big numbers, two or three more work sessions before actually getting to a voting time. I think we're all realistic that as summer hits, people's availability starts to get really jammed. Uh, I would uh, suggest or urge consideration for more, not wait two weeks and then two more weeks and two more weeks, because then we'll be into October. And all due respect, when CCMP starts, uh, particularly Amy and Jen, they're like you know, above their eyeballs. Uh, and we, so we, need to move this more quickly with perhaps a couple meetings. Maybe it's a Tuesday or Thursday, as you do with um, um, capital budget or something, a couple hours each. Um, and, you know, we can work with you around schedules and make ourselves available and find room and, you know, feed you or whatever. Um, no, I, I understand. I, I appreciate it. And that's what I'm saying, too, that to, to really drill down more deeply than what you think we were able to today. Um, but I'd also really want to get a little more clarity, and I'm not saying, Scott, that you haven't been clear, but make sure that we're getting giving you what you want and need. Um, and we can have Jen and others walk through more in more detail, maybe with more pictures or data points on the, on the desk to actually explain these questions you've posed, um, they may, you know, and we may not ever fully satisfy the questions you have, um, but to give you at least how our thinking has been and, and the thinking of others who contributed to this process. So helping us to understand if you answer A, B, C, and D, this will get us to that next level would be invaluable because we don't want to go down the roadway and find out we're not getting to where you want to do so that, as you said, Todd, that you're able then to feel you can make a, a good decision on whether or not to support one part or another of your plan. Well, I think, I think the county can determine whether it's legal or not. They can. Well, we're signing off on it. So. Right. Well, they can look into that, um, Todd. So, one thing. If, what if, we're, if, what if, if it seems to me at this point we're sort of, I'll use the word hung up, and I don't mean that pejoratively, on the data and the mapping. And if those are the two, two of the driving issues right now as to how the nodes are, the, you know, the walkability issues. Um, you know, then we can, we want to drill down to, again, get to the information that's going to be most useful to you, uh, not just trying to explain how we got to it. I mean, that, that's got to be part of it, of course, so you understand why the document is as it is. I think that 10 years ago, I don't remember having the discussions that we're having now, yeah. and I, I would suggest to you the two major issues that it made it much more complicated, maybe, for me. I can't speak for everybody, is both the FUD and the 10 year you know, zoning cycle. Um, these are major changes in our county's um, history. Since 1970, and I don't know if we've ever had anything but the 30 year cycle, much of the history as I know of the board. So 
to make those changes and sign off on that. But it's a big change. And I would like to know what the other county is, why they don't do it over ACA, not just that they are ACA. Because I do think our group works fairly well. I like hearing from the people. We have to be quiet and not say anything. I go not talk at those meetings. I am very <laughs> quiet there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's retired. Remember that? I think we're going to take a vote on that. <laughs> <laughs> Just like one comment to Howard. When things become too crowded and too expensive to live here, the people will do what they've been doing the last 50 years. Business will follow them if there is a necessary need for them. So it's not like nothing to do. Thank you. 
no one from the school board today or Well, the information we're we'll seeing next time and then see where we are after that. Well, the information knows that some of the information is here. See the information and so on. It's not provided for the purpose of the we are making it. So, my information is instead of setting the meet at 4 p.m. or 4 30, so we start early. We start five, zero o'clock. So we can have more time to discuss, to clarify. So all we need now is additional clarification. No, no, I'm just saying. So, Prior to, prior to the meeting to discuss it further. Right. Right. I feel like that they, there was a desire to have it presented. Hey, Jane. Scott, would you be available to come to come over and meet? We, we can check with our office of law. 
just to, I, I think, to affirm what at least I believe to be a non-issue. We will communicate with Has to be. Yeah. We're comfortable with whatever the board chooses to do. I just want to explain, I just want to state some of the reality that you know, we'd be willing to meet more frequently, and we know that. Especially now, if you get into July, the board doesn't meet in August typically, and won't be probably unless you change that up. Uh, but July is a vacation month, and so we just re recognize that keeping the group together for decision making. Yeah, June fifteenth, no, because we're first and third, and and. Traditionally, the board has not met on that first Thursday in July because of the court, but certainly you know, those of us who are here would be available. And we get rid of pipes generally without the state denying them or whatever. They make it very much more difficult. Now we're going to delay development for 10 years as I suppose I, I might be sold on something else 10 years if the pipes stay pretty much where they are. But we're going to have to do something. But I think personally, those are the two main issues that I have that really, I think, delay development. Right, so what if we, the 27th, could do so? The 15th and the 27th. Could do additional and the 27th could take it. And the 27th to hope to take items, if possible, if we'll be able to do it if we're ready or not. Good. Good. Okay. Nice. No. Well, the, the, I guess part of the question is if Scott is going to meet with. Well, it depends. I mean, since part of the part of the fulcrum here is the opportunity for Scott to meet and talk through with Jen and others, you know, like what, how did we get here to make sure that there's a greater comfort with either the metrics or do we have to adjust them? I mean, that's, that's an option. Not a good one, frankly, at this stage, but if that's sort of where we end up, that's what we need to do to address the concerns. Correct, correct. But I'm saying if, if that's going to be the direction, then that obviously is a different matter. Around in I 
right now tentatively on the 27th. So, just so I, I'm sure uh, you know where we're heading, Madam Chair, that the next meeting is on the 15th. Uh, Scott will work with uh, Jen and, and us to come up with a time that he has so we can walk through some of the questions that are still open. Then, when we'll reconvene on the 27th, unless there's guest accommodating uh, some of the members who will be away before that. To actually reconvene, if you will, the conversation about the issues that are still open. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, that sort of follows the, the request that if there are issues, just as for today, that you get it to us in advance so we can make sure if there are open questions, we could try to answer. Um, or at least be prepared, better prepared to answer and, and lead you through the conversation. Well, I don't think you guys need to make it a I've just been advised that three of the five of us sitting up here are not available on the 27th, possibly four out of five. How about how about the 28th or the 26th? 28th is the Wednesday. 26 is a Monday. I don't know. You guys are away all week. Sure it's on it's, the it's, yeah, we, we make sure that it's. I mean, we don't have an obligation to be two weeks notice, but we give notice as far in advance as we can.
So now we're looking instead at, well, again, depends on your schedule, Scott, and your ability to get together with, with folks here. I'm not, I'm not putting our vacation over, uh, over yours, Todd. I, I, it's, I realize everybody has scheduling challenges in the summer. So we will, first thing in the morning, check to make sure that this room is available. It generally is in the evening, so that should not present a problem. But if we run into any obstacles, we'll let you know right away. Otherwise, we'll anticipate a meeting at 4 o'clock on June 8th, uh, and we'll work through some of the issues that uh, Scott, hopefully all the issues that Scott has raised. And I once again request that if there are other issues that people now thought about as a result of today's conversation that you need to uh, for us to work through, just get them through as soon as you can so we can be best prepared. Is, you know, this is the, yes, sir. Another one? Sure. We, we can make those inquiries, yes, sir. Thank you. 